from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. This is Matt Football on EA Sports. Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the Baltimore Ravens. Two hard-hitting blue-collar franchises. One of the better rivalries going. The Ravens and Steelers are underway. On the return, Devin Duvernay. And able to get this out to the 25. Time to see this wide-open Baltimore offense go to work. And leading them, pretty darn good one. Lamar Jackson out of Louisville. The best numbers that Lamar Jackson possesses is that his team wins the vast majority of games that he starts at quarterback. But in addition, 2,900 yards rushing in his career. They know how to build around him and play to his strengths. On first and 10, it's Jackson. Catch is made by Marquise Brown. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Second and ten. To throw is Jackson. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Mark Andrews, there. And that'll make it third down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Jackson will throw again. He's going deep for Brown. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked up by Akella Witherspoon. And the Steelers are going to get the football here as they force the INT on the game's opening drive. Here come the Steelers now on offense, led out by a man who's been at the control since 2004. Six-time Pro Bowler, Ben Roethlisberger. And it's not out of the question. It's not out of the realm at all to wonder if this might be the final season for Big Ben, either in a Steeler uniform or in the NFL period. He resigned back in March saying, it's my greatest honor to be a Pittsburgh Steeler and give my all for the organization. Had a big year in 2020, 33 touchdowns, just 10 interceptions, and led the Steelers to an 11-0 start. You have to think that he would love to end his career the way Peyton Manning and John Elway did, 
hoisting the Lombardi Trophy and heading off into the sunset. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Most like that at just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. This is Chase Claypool on the receiving end. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. So, Charles, defensively here, you're going up against a veteran quarterback. He's got a lot of know-how, a ton of savvy, but a guy who's not the most mobile of quarterbacks. What's the plan of attack? You spend all week pumping up your defensive front. Your defensive tackles, your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys who go after the quarterback the most because you know that he's not going to run and beat you consistently throughout the game. You can rush more aggressively off the edge and even up the middle because even if he evades you, he's not going to go very far. You have a lot more confidence going after him in the pocket. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. Justin Matabike able to run him down for a loss of 12 that time. Well, I think that time he just maybe held on to it a little too long, CD, because after a couple of seconds in this league, you know those defenders are coming. And how many times do we talk about complementary football? We usually talk about does the offense help the defense? Does the defense help the offense? I think in this case, does the quarterback help out his offensive line? You only have a certain amount of time to get rid of the football. They can only do so much. On this play, he took them to the limits. Meanwhile, Ben's throw there, held in by Claypool. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. On third down, Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. They went with the dime look that time on defense. Just flooded the field with defensive backs. Blanketed everyone. Took away all the passing angles. Thus, the incompletion. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice, an ambitious effort, but it's well short, and this will remain a scoreless game. This Ravens offense heads back out there, led by Lamar Jackson. He's probably feeling like he dodged a little bit of a bullet through the interception on the last drive, and then the missed field goal, so no points. Not only did he dodge the bullet, he can go back out there and flourish now. And I'll guarantee this, one of the leaders on the defense came off the field and told him, don't worry about it. You noticed? We got you. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. They'll start by run of the option to the right. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. Jackson's throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So from the 36 now, first and 10.
Here's Jackson to throw. He's got his man. It's Andrews. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. back to the 29. T.J. Watt, always a disruptor, there to blow that play up. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. From the gun, it's a run for Freeman. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. type of plays are backbreakers for a defense. They thought they had him hemmed in, thought they were going to get him on the ground with the pass rush, but were unable to do so. He gets away, picks up a big first down, and sets up first and goal inside the 10. So first and goal from the nine-yard line. And now Jackson will look to throw it. Forced out to his left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. From the two now, second and goal. And they'll try to pound it in with Ricard. And he will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Patrick Ricard taking it in from two yards out. And the Ravens have taken the early lead. Well, it was second and goal. You're in there close. That's the fullback's comfort zone. Not only is it his comfort zone, it's an expectation. That's what he's supposed to do. Turn and hand it to him. Big guys fire out. Find your way into the end zone. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And the Ravens lead at 7-0. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Kick it away following the touchdown. Taken at the goal line. And they will ring it down a couple yards shy of the 30. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And yeah, they were in field goal range the last time out but couldn't connect. 
And it's early in the game, so I don't think that the confidence just goes entirely out of, you know, running your kicker back out there. But let's face it, some coaches have a little bit less patience for that than others. Let's see if they call the game differently now in terms of what they do on drives and not try and settle for field goals. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. And they'll run for the first time with Najee Harris. It was Chuck Clark coming up to make the tackle. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Harris going to get it again on second down. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. Chalk that up as a four-yard loss. And now it's third down. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Roethlisberger on the draw. It's Harris. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. Nine yards on the carry there, but it'll be fourth down now. Fourth and short, partner. I mean, this would be a really risky call. Here we are in the first quarter. On They're your own side of the own field. On side of the field. But boy, what a tone setter that would be to go for it and get it, wouldn't it? You're gritty today. I I'm, like it. I'm feeling it. <laughs> on fourth down, the rookie Presley Harvin on to punt for the Steelers as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. So just a three-yard return following a punt of 45. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. They go to Freeman again on second down. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. On the heels of that good carry by Devontae Freeman, here's first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. Freeman with a fast feet, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they block well too. Not only have they scouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. This is Freeman on first and 10. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, 
Their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. From the 44, Jackson. He's going deep for Brown. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. And that may have been incomplete, but he reminds me so much of when my dad used to take me to the baseball stadium and watch the home run hitters in batting practice. I'll get to the stadium early just to watch this kid throw it. He can throw it out of the stadium. On third down, Jackson. They'll set up the screen for Freeman. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn it into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. They'll run on first down. Freeman. And some room to maneuver. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. 61 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Jackson. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Hollywood, Marquise Brown from eight yards out. And the Ravens lead this now 13-0 here in the opening quarter of the ball game. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Tucker able to connect on the extra point. And it's now 14 to nothing. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. And the Steelers getting set and ready for their next possession. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes there's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start on the ground with Harris. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. What I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Roethlisberger. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. 
They've given him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes with a big third down coming up. He's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. Now it's Roethlisberger. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Harris. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Stopped him shy of the marker, thought they were bringing up fourth down, and then that penalty. Let's face it, they thought they had bent, but could absorb that, right? Instead, they broke as a result of their own penalty. A bad time for a roughing penalty, and they get the gift of a first and ten. On the give, this is Harris. Oh, he's got some breathing room. 20, 10, 5, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. And even 50 yards for the rookie, Najee Harris. And the Steelers are able to make this a close game again. They were already down two scores early. They needed something to try to stem that tide, and that certainly qualifies a big play to get them in the end zone. It qualifies indeed because, let's face it, they don't get something done on this drive, turn it back over, this game could be 88 and out the gate early. What, 88 and out the gate? Yeah. Uh, what's that? Well, listen, I used to hear my old man talk about it. It usually meant that thing's done. Oh, well, now that they got the touchdown, it's, it's not 88 and out the gate. We still got a good game going ahead of us. Well done with the extra point. And I'll cut to lead down to a touchdown. Turn is Duvernay. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action. Now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But you know, there was a big time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. <laughs> that he would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> Throwing now, Jackson on first down. This one caught by his tight end, Andrews. Even with that broken tackle, can't go very far. Stop short of the 30. Three yards the gain there, second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where Every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And this defense going to bring out a couple extra DBs here on third and a yard. Out of the gun, they give to Freeman. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped him, bringing up fourth down. So on 
fourth down. Here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Ray Ray McLeod deep for Pittsburgh. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 24. They'll try and start this drive in the air. They'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryermuth. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They run the counter. It's Harris. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 76 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Oh, that's a very good run there by Najee Harris, who can take it inside. He can get to the perimeter. He can do it all with his build and his speed. This is a guy coming out of Alabama who did everything for the Crimson Tide. That's why Pittsburgh took him in the first round. Last in the league in rushing as a team last year were the Steelers. They're expecting Harris to kickstart their running game. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They run with Harris. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Next receivers have spread the defense out. They were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. On second down, this is Harris. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. zone now. Here's Roethlisberger on first down. That's complete to his tight end, Fryermuth. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. To throw again on second down, Roethlisberger. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. Touchdown, Steelers. Not 
Najee Harris with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Steelers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well, fair to say they've got something here in this rookie running back, and he's in for the second time in the ball game. And Brandon, it's a position where there's often a lot of turnover, a lot of competition at that spot. But he's proven to them that he wants to be the bell cow guy that his franchise can rely on. Boswell for the extra point. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all not up at 14. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it was the rookie, Najee Harris, who finished it off with a touchdown run. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And that 14-0 lead to begin the ball game, well, that's gone now. Time to regroup. I think even up two touchdowns, they knew this wasn't going to be a walk in the park. And I think that's why we would see the head coach going up and down the sidelines telling his team, let's stay with it, let's keep going. It's almost like he knew they were going to make their run at him, and they have. As you said, let's see if they can regroup and get going again. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Off the play fake, Jackson. And this is going to be hauled in by the tight end, Andrews. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A big connection on that one. 31 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Here's Jackson. Gets it off to Freeman. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it'll be a second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Working with a second and three. Now a handoff. It's Freeman. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. You don't see that a ton, do you? With a cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Play action. It's Jackson. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And it looks like Steeler football. It is. He was under duress, surveying, trying to find somebody to get the ball out of his hands. In the meantime, the defense, they took it out of his hands. And when the ball snapped, I know exactly what the defense is thinking. Get a sack. Put him on the ground. But when you can also knock the ball free while doing so, oh, there's the bonus for you as a defender. And now out come the Steelers. They've got momentum on their side. They were once down 14-0. Now it's even at 14 as they look to put together a drive to get them the lead. Follow 
following the fumble recovery. It's Roethlisberger. He finds his tight end, Gentry. And he'll be down at the 46. So they go from 146 to the other on a pickup of eight. The coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, but when he when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? to throw again on second down. Roethlisberger, that ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. A little football one-on-one -on -one there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out, to the sideline, and make a catch. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now Roethlisberger. And this one is incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they run successful. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage. But you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. The Steelers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Roethlisberger will throw. Open man, that's the tight end, Fryermuth. And they will stop him short. They get him to the ground at the 27, no first down. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, this from 44 yards out. And Boswell's kick is good. And they take a 17-14 lead. So they wind up turning the turnover into points as they convert there for three. Yeah, that was a nice job there to force the fumble. They recover, hand things over to their offense, and then the offense went down and got them three. That alone, that's not enough to win a game, but both units able to do their jobs on these last two drives. Yeah, for the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. On the return is Duvernay. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Lamar Jackson marching back onto the field. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to write the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get better for his team, maybe get him back into the ball game or into the lead. In these situations, I remember playing with a quarterback once where he actually ran out onto the field first ahead of everyone else just to say, guys, let's go. Try and create that energy, create that spark. Well, so far, he has one touchdown, one interception. He'll be looking for that second touchdown now. And that would off the mark behind him, incomplete. A lot of times, it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Here's second and ten. And now a tenth carry for Freeman. 
And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. This is third and 11. Jackson. And that is incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. It'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Najee Harris and the Steeler offense set to go to work once again. And he's found the end zone twice, and now I'm guessing he's thinking, hey, let's find it three times. And you got to figure from the defensive perspective, how has he gotten there twice? What are we going to do to keep him out for a third time? How do we tighten things down? Because he and his offensive mates, they are really in sync right now. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Throwing again on second down, Roethlisberger, and that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. And the Steelers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and four. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. The Steelers send out their punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return, and the Ravens will get it. First and 10 from deep in their own territory. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They run it for the first time with a backup Murray. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here.
Another run for Murray on second down. And he'll power his way up near the 25. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. And Pittsburgh with six defensive backs in the game here on third down. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. A little costly there. You wipe out the first down, you also move further back. No doubt about it. So you went from moving the sticks to them staying in the same spot, except for that one guy carrying the yard marker, he moves back farther. They go play action with Jackson. And this is caught, it's Brown. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10, right at the 40. They run from the pistol here with Freeman. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. On the option, Jackson will keep it. The keeper gets him seven that time, but it'll lead to a third down. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained, and in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. Jackson looking to throw on third. And he's got his tight end. That's Andrews. <laughs> Gotta say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're gonna throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there. And they pick up the first down. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Jackson now. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked off by a Akello Witherspoon. And the Steelers are going to have it here just past the 25. But a team's turned it over three times in the first half. We just look at the offense and say, guys, what are you doing? But instead, we really should be looking at the defense. They've created the takeaways. Two interceptions, one cause fumble. They played awfully well swarming to the ball here in the first half. Getting set to go again, Ben Roethlisberger heading back out there. He's been in a pretty good groove. They actually have more yards on the ground than through the air, but both have been good, pretty balanced. 
And have we ever met a coach when we've talked to him before a game that hasn't mentioned wanting to be balanced? No, because then you've got both sides hitting the defense. They don't know what to expect, right? Really helps your play calling because now you're in a position where you're confident in either one, either aspect of the game. Dial it up and let it go. And so far, that's allowed them to lead. Absolutely. Have the lead here in the second quarter. Now a throw here to his running back. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Three yards the gain there, second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, Brandon, all receivers are trying to make sure that the defender thinks they're going to the middle of the field when they're running the outcut. And that play didn't get it done very well because that one was batted down. The Steelers on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third and seven. Now Roethlisberger. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover. But doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah. And they had all that momentum after getting the football and now zapped right back in the other direction. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and possession will switch hands first and 10. And the Ravens taking the field. And two interceptions thrown here in this first half. You hear it no matter the sport, they say the great athletes, they can kind of have a short-term memory, but that's easier said than done. It is easier said than done, but I played with a guy who threw two interceptions in the first quarter of a really big game we were playing. Johnny Unitas? And no, not, not quite of that level <laughs> and not of that age. But I remember I was looking, going for the age. Huh? I remember looking over at him, and he was smiling. And I thought, what is he smiling about? It's because he had enough confidence in himself that uh, that was a fluke. And he went out and played pretty well the rest of the day. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Play action. Now Jackson. This will be caught by Brown. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. First down, it's Freeman, and running with power here. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. 80 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. Exactly what they needed right there, because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off, because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10, right at the 40. They go play action now. Jackson, he'll buy some time right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. On second down, Freeman. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. And they'll 
try and run the option to pick it up. And he will have a Ravens first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first half highlights and analysis from a back and forth first half that we've seen. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw taken in by Watkins here. A gain of six there on first. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up. They'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson, a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Ravens have retaken the lead. Now this defense, so many things to worry about in the red zone area, but you'd have to almost think that Lamar Jackson running the football, that might be number one. It should be number one. And in this portion of the field where things shrink a little bit because the receivers can't run past anyone because they'll run out of real estate, you should have all eyes on Lamar Jackson when the ball is snapped and try and keep him back in the pocket. Yeah, I don't think that they were surprised he was running it there. They just couldn't stop him, and he ends up in the end zone. Tucker with the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Najee Harris and the Steeler offense set to go to work once again. And Charles, you can't really fault him. He's over 100 yards already. He's not the reason they're losing. And that is really unusual because ordinarily, when you've set the tone this way and have run it this effectively, usually your team's in control. So it's a very strange situation. And you're right, you can't fault him. He's done a great job for his team thus far. I'm guessing he's saying, feed me on the sidelines. Now will they continue to do it? On first and 10, it's Roethlisberger. And his throw is gonna be incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Quick completion here to Johnson. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. So much of this game is focus and concentration. And whenever I see guys running the in route, I know that in the back of their mind, they're always wondering who's lurking inside that might put a big hit on them as they try and catch the ball. Yeah. 
Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Ben to throw again. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Now Roethlisberger to throw. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. That's a pretty throw right there. That ball's in the air a long time, but it's right on the money on the right sideline. A really good route. Moving the defenders towards the middle of the field before breaking to the sideline. What a completion there. Big time arm strength. Very nice route. Again, it's Roethlisberger. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catch in the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. A short one there to Fryermuth. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. Here's Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashy plays very often, but he's pretty reliable. Usually an excellent target and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. The Raven offense going to take over late in this first half as they will take over here with a little more than 30 seconds remaining. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Now it's Jackson. He's got Freeman here. It's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. From the gun, it's Jackson. And this is caught by Watkins. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Field now. Here's Jackson. Throw right side is complete to Andrews. His tight end. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half.
Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. This was the old NFL record distance for decades, a 63-yard attempt. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. So that would have been something from that distance, but to no avail. Comes up empty as we have reached the intermission. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Back and forth, we went in that first half. This has certainly been an entertaining one to watch thus far. So let's get right back out to it as we'll rejoin our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. as we are underway in quarter three. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. And the Steeler offense ready to get going here in this third quarter. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start the drive with Harris. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 112 yards for him on the ground now, as he has been terrific here this afternoon. He had a really solid first half running the football and picking up where he left off here in the third quarter. How about the yardage he's piling up right now? This feels like a full game, not just this series that we're watching right now. I know people are screaming, where are the adjustments from halftime on the defensive side of the ball? Sometimes they're just not there. Sometimes you just got to find a way to tackle someone. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, that's caught by Claypool. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. On second down now, it's Harris. And once again, they stop him behind the line. Great job by this Ravens defense. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Well, I would have figured after the nine-yard run on the previous play, getting one more yard wouldn't have been much of a problem. But apparently it was, and now it's third down. To throw here, Roethlisberger. Over the middle, complete. That's Johnson. 
And he will have a Steelers first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. down it's Roethlisberger again it's Johnson and he gets this to the 35 good for a gain of five now after the completion we're going to get a timeout an injured player while the training staff takes a peek we'll take a break Second down, it's Harris, and he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run, and at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now it's Roethlisberger, completing it to the right side, Johnson. A gain of six there on first. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. From the 24, Roethlisberger. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Roethlisberger. He gets it complete to Harris. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Scrimmage the 15. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Throw left side, got to be taken in by Harris. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. He's had success running the football. This is more or less an extension of that because they drop it off to him on the screen. And I'll bet he's thinking to himself, if I didn't have to slow up a bit here in traffic, I could have really made something out of that one. First down marker at the five. It's second and goal. Now it's Roethlisberger. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Zach Gentry there to make the grab. And the Steelers have once again taken the lead. They went empty backfield, all their weapons out wide, so there, were, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do. No secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball, because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, people bring pressure at you. They manage to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass. Extra point now by Boswell. Boswell. 
And that one gives him a three-point lead. So now drive 12 plays in length. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Turn is Duvernay. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. And they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive, missed field goal. Always hurts a team because, you know, you've put something out there, you've given yourself a chance, you're in range, and the ball doesn't go through the post but it's not something to panic about, I don't believe. Just keep playing and keep going. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Jackson. Throw left side complete. That's Watkins. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. On second down now, it's Freeman. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Here's Jackson to throw. Buying time to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll run on first down. It's Freeman. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said, of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. Seven here. <laughs> Throwing on second and eight, Jackson. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Mm, close there. He caught it, just wasn't able to stay in bounds. And that's where the sideline was used as a 12th defender. You know, 11's legal, 
This one is an imaginary one, one that my college coach used to call Sammy Sideline. <laughs> Sammy Sideline can protect you at times, and in this case, that's exactly what he did for the defenders. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them, and these guys have been taking advantage so far. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. That's into the hands of Crochet. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Jackson. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Now it's Jackson. He's got his man. It's Andrews. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Throwing is Jackson. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Touchdown! Devin Duvernay from 17 yards out. And the Ravens have retaken a third quarter lead. And on that one, able to catch it, also able to have the wherewithal to take it in for the score. And how about the phases of a successful catch and a completion of a play? Look the ball in, secure the catch, and then, of course, the run after the catch that ends up in the end zone. Tucker now to add the point after. And that will make this a four-point game. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. 
Najee Harris and the Steeler offense set to go to work once again. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. He's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see it back. Just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called. Because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25 yard line. Harris starts the drive on the ground. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's been a remarkable day at the office for him running the football. Those yards just continue to pile well past 100. And how about more than double-digit carries in the second half alone? That's what you want as a runner because you've got to prove to your offensive line that you're going to be as tough as they are. They don't rotate in and out on every play. Running backs often do, so those who can stay out there with their offensive linemen, those are the guys they really value. It's a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Pretty good first down play. Keeps them ahead of schedule, as they say. And ostensibly, they could go right back to it because there are multiple options on this play. Hand it inside. Quarterback tucks it and keeps it. Quarterback throws the ball downfield. You should be able to react to the defense and have an option available on every snap. On second down. It's Harris, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher, third and six. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Harris. So no gain on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 18. And they'll run the option to start the drive. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. Only people celebrating? The guys who just gave up that play. <laughs> Following the penalty, it's Murray. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. <laughs> So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. <laughs> 
After the penalty, here's Freeman. And a short pickup here as he'll get across the 10 to the 11-yard line. Joe Schobert, number four in the NFL in tackles last year, in to make the stop. Well, obviously, they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead, now, they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. Throwing on second and long. Jackson. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's going deep for Brown. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. A handoff to Harris to begin the drive. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Second down and four. Roethlisberger will throw. He's got his tight end flyer youth over the middle. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. I like how they worked the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. Now Roethlisberger. He finds his tight end Gentry. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses. Catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and seven. They run again with Harris. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Now a first and 10 at the 11. 
Looking to throw. It's brought in by Harris. And in for the Steelers' touchdown. Najee Harris, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Steelers have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Hey, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. That time, a six-play drive, and it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. Inside the 30 at the 27. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 27. Throwing to start the drive. Jackson. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. Chris Wormley. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. We've seen him escape similar situations earlier in the game and get away for pretty good yardage, and that time they get him down. Yeah, they've had enough evidence that he can get away and run for good yardage, haven't they? That time it felt like, okay, enough of this. Let's play it the right way and get him on the ground before he does any damage. Jackson's throw into the hands of Andrews. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. On third down, Jackson gets it off to Freeman. And he'll get nothing out of that one. So they'll get nothing out of that play. And that'll bring up fourth down. The whole idea of the screen pass is to fool the defense in a big way and create a big play. They weren't fooled. Not one <laughs> second, not one bit. How about them figuring it out, diagnosing it, and spilling it for lost yardage? Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. on the punt, give him just one yard on the return. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Steelers with a first and 10 at about the 32. 
They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They'll run with Harris. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? On second down now. It's Harris. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Going to be some contact going on. I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. Now Roethlisberger. That'll be taken in there by James Washington. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Top. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll look to throw here. Open man, that's the tight end, Fryermuth. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. On second down. It's Harris, and he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with, and throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to, and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Now Harris. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. He'll look to throw. He gets this one to Johnson. And the Steelers are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Back to throw. 
And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Back to throw here. And it's caught. A touchdown-saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Ben to throw again. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. Here we go, a big play and a tight game late. They're going on fourth and goal. They run for it with Harris, and he didn't get there. Knocked backwards to the two-yard line. He had three touchdowns already, but won't get a fourth here, and the Ravens come up big down at their own goal line. So that's a decision that could loom pretty large here. They go for it on fourth down, but come up empty. But I actually like the call, and the reason? It shows me a head coach has faith in his team overall, first on the offensive side, thinking they can pick it up, but also knowing that he has faith in his defense that if they don't, they'll go out there and stop him. I like the confidence he showed. Inside handoff here to Ricard. And he was very fortunate there to get out of his end zone. He maybe got back to the two-yard line. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. So I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. Now Jackson back into his end zone. Quick slant to Brown. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Thanks to that last play, a little more room to operate. First and 10 at the 18. From the gun, Jackson. They'll roll him out right. First down and more for Jackson. And finally brought down at the 34-yard line. 16 yards there, two straight plays of 16 yards and another first down. Looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he was trying to force a lot of throws into his windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. He had no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Jackson. He'll get that to the rookie from Minnesota, Rashad Bateman. A good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. And his throw is incomplete. In any event, it happened pretty quickly. I'm not sure he made the right decision on that one. I think if he had it to do over again, he would have found a different target downfield. But he made his decision, and that one's incomplete. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Now 
Jackson. And he's got his tight end. That's Andrews. And he will have a Ravens first down as that'll be a pickup of about five as they convert on third and inches. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Now Jackson on first down. And a Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Chris Wormley picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, when you time those screen passes perfectly, they can work perfectly. But that time, it took a little too long to develop. And you zeroed in on exactly what makes that play go. Timing. Because if the timing's off at all, those unblocked defenders coming at the quarterback, they'll put him on the deck. Another try after the first down sack. Jackson. Over the middle, he's got Watkins. That catch good for five. It's third down. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys in plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does. And we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practice now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And this kick is not going to get there. It's short and no good. Steeler offense set to regain possession. A little less than four minutes remaining, and the margin for error is small with this slim lead. Operate within your four-minute offense here, Charles? Definitely. Remember, the four-minute offense doesn't always correspond to what's up on the clock. What they need to do is play a little bit of keep away right now. Run the clock down. Make sure their opponent doesn't get the ball back. Their dream scenario get enough first downs and make them eat up their timeouts so the game ends when you're kneeling down with the football. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. That swung out wide to Harris. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? Atlanta had the lead against New England, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. And I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Roethlisberger on the draw, it's Harris. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. So that one will be accepted. Roethlisberger over the middle and it's incomplete. Had Fryermuth the intended target and now it's second down. 
You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. On second down now. It's Harris, and he struggles to get a yard here, maybe a yard, down to the 31. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. Quick completion here to Johnson. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They're going on fourth down. It's Roethlisberger. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. Totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And a good gain here of nine from the 19 down to the 10. Time the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, you can't hold him. On the give, this is Harris. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris. He will push his way down to about the 14. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around a training facility for an entire week. Maybe flashback to high school or college, <laughs> carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Roethlisberger to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Adafe Owe gets in there to drop him for a loss of 13 yards, and it's also fourth down now. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. Boswell's kick is good. And the drive will end up yielding three. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? 
question because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden they're down. successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. On oh, the return is Duvernay. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Jackson finding Watkins and he'll be taken down but not before they work it across midfield well going into the final play of this game they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end but they couldn't get it done however we were treated to really a spectacular affair even though they didn't finish it off you're exactly right they took us down to the last play we're still you were wondering, could it happen, possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz Field. <laughs>